Hi, hello guys, uh, this is uh, another episode in this occasion. I'm here with Harry Budamagar. He's the first double about knee amputee to submit Mountain Everest. So it's a pleasure for me to have you here, Harry. So how are you? I'm very good. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, that's nice. So first of all, Harry, uh, I would like to start with your childhood. childhood. How, how do you remember your childhood? Ah, uh, that is quite, in, uh, it was quite interesting. So uh, I grew up um, uh, at about um, 2,700 meters in a cow shed, um, a very remote village in the western part of Nepal. Uh, then I went to school barefoot, walking about 45 minutes each way. Then, um, uh, then, you know, there was no pen and paper, so uh, I learned how to write on a wooden plank with a chalky stone. Uh, and uh, what else? Um, yep, uh, and I was uh, forced to marry at age of 11. Uh, and I grew up in civil war um, at the time. It lasted 10 years and more than 17,000 people were killed at that time. Thank God that we, uh, you know, we, you know, you know that, you know, two enemies are in the government at the moment, coalition government. So we have a peace. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what it is. And I skipped that w war and went to join another war <laughs> here in the UK. So okay. yeah, yeah. And now you you mentioned that you used to walk barefoot to 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 your school. But when you when you were a kid and uh, you were thinking about like I would like to be a climber and I would like to 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 climb the mountain Everest, you you were thinking all, all of these uh, things. Um. Uh, yeah. So we, we from very uh, small age in the primary school um, in Nepal. We had in our textbook. It was about the story of the uh, Mount Everest. Uh, it's the highest peak in the world. It's in uh, Nepal, and uh, simply Mount Everest is for uh, Nepalese people. It's a, a symbol um, and pride of um, Nepal. Uh, and let's say if you go to America and say, "Do you know where is Nepal?" Possibly they, they won't know. Uh, many people and if you say do you know where is mount everest and everybody knows and it's over there <laughs> uh, so so so, so uh, yeah and um i read um you know story of sir edmund hillary and Tenjing norgay uh, in, uh, in those textbooks and what about me being um and i was honestly very privileged to uh, having it attending three events uh, this week with the uh, uh, son of the um, uh, Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenjing Norgay and meet all of their families. So it was amazing. Oh, that's that's incredible. And now uh, uh, another thing that you mentioned when you were a kid that that is a little maybe shock from uh, people from all other cultures or other countries uh, is that that you get. You, you got married at age 11. Well, you, you got forced to get married at age 11. But uh, how is that come about? Like, um, Yeah, that is, uh, you, you know, uh, at that time, um, you, you know, our village was very remote. It took about uh, from uh, from district capital to walk to uh, our um, my village. If you are carrying loads, it used to take uh, three days to get up there. So uh, it's kind of culture um, that, you know, we had and uh, simply, um, you know, you know, my wife's uh, mom and my dad, we, they're good friends and they thought that, yeah, let's get them married. And I think, um, you, you know, we'll be, we'll be have a great life, you know, you know, but it wasn't the case. It wasn't the case. There is no uh, child protection there. Um, there is no social, um, uh, you know, social services there. So, simply, what happens is happens. As long as no one reports to the, it's illegal. But it, if no no one uh, reports to the police, then it just um, just go under the carpet, and that's 
uh, many, 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 many times uh, happens. I think people, um, yeah, get married. Some of them is, is uh, you know, uh, in some of the culture, um, uh, that actually, you know, and they marry them even be, before they actually born. That's why. Wow. So, <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. So, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a culture. But um, as um, now, it's getting much better. Still, you know, many people, many, uh, many young, uh, young people get, ma you know, get married um, quite early age. Uh, even the you know age of to get married is i think is 21 years in nepal uh, but you know many people just get married and just uh, yeah okay and, 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 and what what were your thoughts uh, when you when you was in 11 years old like yeah the, the first thing the first thing was i told my dad that um, Okay, I will pass my pass the SLC, which is in the UK. It's about GCSE level, the, the high school. Uh, then I'll get married. I told him, and he says, um, "Now that's not uh, happening. Uh, you marry, or maybe you don't go to school. You know, so I have to choose one." And at that time, I was thinking, just I'm gonna get stand on my feet, get get independent, and run away from home. That's what I was thinking at that time. Okay, and. Are you still married to the same girl that you married at age 11? Or? No, 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 no. So um, my daughter is um, working actually next door at the moment uh, from my um, first wife. And I have two uh, lovely boys from my uh, from my wife now. And they are go going to school. So after, after, uh, <laughs> After uh, uh, you know finishing uh, interview with you, uh, I will go and pick up the little one. The big one walks uh, from um, from home. Oh, okay, okay. That that's that's really nice. That's really... so. Uh, now, what made you join the British Army? Uh, for us, it's uh, for us. It's like a, it's a history. It's a culture uh, for us, um, and. Uh, as a being um, Nepalese uh, boy, we can join to four different armies. Uh, so, it's a British army. British army. We, we are we are called the Gurkhas. Okay. Okay. So, 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 so British army. We got our Singapore uh, Gurkha contingent, uh, which is a Singapore police force, but they don't have a police, uh, you know, army, so they call it police. They are just paramilitaries. Um, and Indian army, the police army, so you can join four, four, four different armies. And um, uh, we are called Gurkhas, so Indian Gurkhas, British Gurkhas, Singapore Gurkhas, you know, that's, uh, that's what we've been called. And we are, uh, this is happening um, uh, last 200, now more than last 209 years. So it's a very long, and uh, whatever Great Britain, uh, United Kingdom got involved with the uh, older conflicts, uh, yeah, and uh, we we involved with that. Okay, but it's like a, an obligation, like they obligate you to to join the the this in this case the the Gurkha army or no 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 there's no obligations but uh, okay. um there, there, there are many things one is, is our is history a culture one thing. The another thing is the opportunity, you know. So even even in Nepal, there's not enough job, not well paid job, and but just uh, you know coming to the United Kingdom is you gonna have a better life, but also you can able to look after your families back in Nepal. Um, you can give a more uh, better future for your children. You can also travel around the world as a part of your job. So yeah, there is there, there are lots of opportunities. So okay, and how how is the British Army training? Or how how was your training with with in this case with the Gurkhas? Yeah, so uh, we uh, so we have got Gurkha regiment in the British Army. So 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 uh, within the British Army, we have got Gurkha. Um, uh, regiment, uh, so okay. um, Gorkha, Gorkha Brigade actually, and we have got uh, other regiments, a few others like we got a, um, you, you, you know, a rifle company. You call it. Um, we 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 have got um, engineers, uh, signalers. We got a 
uh, you, you, you know, brigade band and and we got a logistics and we got the clocks. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we have we got we got different, but it, it, it's all the Gorkas. But all we have to do nine months of a basic training basic army training so which is british our british counterpart they just do um two months and we do nine months so so they are, are, are it's very tough yeah i mean i can imagine nine months oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. E, 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 even selection is very tough um so um uh, this year more than 20000 applicants were there uh, and i think they they came around 200 around around 200 uh, to 200 mm -hmm. people so it is very very tough but it's a well paid job for a, a nepalese um, boy so so uh, also there's lots of opportunity as well but also again i said it's a history it's a culture it's a relationship between two countries and yeah yeah there are lots of things okay and how, how do you remember uh, those nine months training like in in some at some point you were thinking like oh i'm just gonna quit like I, yeah, I don't yeah, do yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly, uh, exactly. I, I i i i was uh i i don't think that uh, i wanted to quit but you know you used to look at so in um in winter it's a very cold in uh, it's cold in in, in um, uk and uh, in the morning sometimes you know the sky get clear and you look at up and you know you know you can see the plane stress oh god and when I, when am i going back to see my family and friends right and you know so yeah yeah you you miss a lot but slowly you get used to it and uh, everything becomes fine everything becomes normal okay yeah it, it, it like it's just part of your life you know like yeah yeah so so now uh, i i would like to know if you could tell us uh, how, how do you lost your your legs i mean if you can guide us through that day i mean you you woke up or how it was that day uh so um it was 17th april uh, 2010 it was it was about three four o'clock o'clock in the afternoon so it's kind of pretty similar time here in you <laughs> but it, uh, yeah, 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 that was in afghanistan but uh, uh it was about three four o'clock in the afternoon it's a very you know hot day you know it is uh, really hot uh, and on that day, we had a two mission. One is we just got in, so we need to familiarize with the area. And uh, the second thing was to uh, security to, to two engineers so that they can go and survey the, you know, what all uh, damaged well, so they can go and repair for local people. So, so, so local, local people can have water later. So that we had a two mission and um we were 20 in the squad and i was 10 we we're working in the one single file and uh, you know nine nine people passed nothing happened it was a really small path and and when i went just went bang and yeah my last sense pretty much in a blink of eye wow and i mean do, do you remember that moment when you step on on the on the mine and wh what do you remember like all was black and... uh it, it 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 was a constant uh so i can't remember you know how exactly gone off but what i can remember is uh the first thing uh my my right ear was ringing um i had a radio on the left uh, and uh, yeah um um I looked down and my right leg wasn't there straight away. My left was there, but it was dangling on the bone and skins. Also injured my right arm. You can see here. Okay. Uh, yeah. so, so I couldn't able to move my right arm. Um, uh, and um, yeah, just uh, just uh, my my colleagues. They did a great job and they passed me up and they stopped the bleeding and they stabilized me. They gave me first aid. Uh, and um, you know there was a no secondary device of that you know you know uh, ied 
or um, no one is you know fighting at us so so um, the guys called the heli on time and i was evacuated and i, I was saved my, they saved my life yeah okay that's well and now uh, after losing your legs your legs uh, uh, what came to your mind like what were your thoughts uh, there, there there are quite lots of things was going on uh, the first thing i thought was am i going to survive and the guys after about five minutes uh, they said that heli inbound in 10 minutes and i thought yeah i think i'm gonna survive okay. uh, then uh, then uh, i thought about my guys because i was uh, in second in command in my team uh, and um, so i had lots of responsibility and we just got in uh, you know a long way to go um, our job was to do the job try to stay safe and everybody go back home safe you know that was the kind of the plan but it didn't happen um, i was injured and later uh, one guy was killed and another two got injured as well so yeah mm, yeah it was quite tough and you know i was thought about you know um going back to you know family you know in in nepal we say that you know when you, your children goes away from, you know for a long period of time and you bless them that yeah just to please come back as a you win you know so yeah and, and i couldn't able to do that to my family and uh, yeah i cried a lot to thinking of that and uh yeah it was uh Oh God, uh, yeah, that was a that, that was a hard time. I thought that you know my life is completely gone. I had to sit on wheelchair for the rest of my life. I'm not sure what I was going to do, how to feed my family. It's not just me, but um, I had many families back in Nepal who depended on me as well. So um, yeah, there is many things was running in my mind, and I thought that I would need a carer the rest of my life and sit on a wheelchair. My life is completely finished. Maybe I'm gonna be the burden of the earth because I wasn't able to do anything, and maybe I've done something wrong in previous life, and maybe I'm having this. You know, you know, this is kind of the things that was going in my mind because that's how I grew up, and that's um, some of my culture who they think um, this way and perceive this way, and but not just my culture, I think, but there's a may may many. Um, uh places around the world that um, you know um, uh, they do that yeah and now that that you tell me this like it is different in nepal how people see uh, other people with disabilities i mean they or uh, did you feel like they treat you different when when people see you yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Even my step, my friends uh, start treating me differently, not badly, but just too sympathetic way, you know? It's like, um, you know, oh, uh, oh, they need and just try all, even, even I don't need it, they start holding my hands, and you know, still they do. <laughs> <Sometimes. Okay. laughs> and and, and, and uh, when I went to Nepal, then I was like, um, you know, the guy popped in from, another planet you know and everybody just gather around and just this is going to keep looking at until i'm there out of sight and uh, you know uh, and people even some you know dominated me yeah that you know and uh, yeah uh, it was not just it was quite easy for me to adapt my life myself but not just my life but my family has to adapt with me and we together have to adapt with the society that we has got a very conservative values uh, on disability so yeah yeah it was pretty tough but you know one day um, yeah some you know some point i was just drinking a bit too much and uh, you know if i didn't drink my hands were a bit shaky my brain got foggy uh and uh, yeah yeah i tried to take my life a couple of times and uh, then later i found that you know i kind of realized that you know i think i'm gonna die soon and if i die that's fine it's the end of my story but um my family will suffer because of me 
so i just wanted to live for my family uh, and yeah then after that is completely like a magic so i went to skydiving first and you know i was in kind of uh, a suicidal mode at that time so so how suicidal mode so now if i fall down half of my body is gone if another half goes that's fine you know okay um yeah but but also i haven't done um you know skydiving in my life so this is the first time i was doing so i wanted to experience that as well but when i landed safely i realized that um, even if you don't have legs you can do something you know i will have little confidence then after my aim was to what can i do physically not having both legs and i tried a lot of sports adventures and many things and finally i found that you know it's all possible it's just different way of doing things i might need slightly more help i might need different kit and equipment but you know this is possible if you think about the you know the world um you, you, in old days we were not able to run it's not possible to run around the world and explore all so we start designing the things right so we start designing things uh, that can take faster in the land in the sea and now we can go to the another planet and we made that possible so yeah anything is possible as long as we adapt our, our life according to the time and situation and equipment yeah and also uh, something that you mentioned is like the the importance of, of family because that that in your case that made you realize like uh, uh, that, that was a, an extra motivation for you not to 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 overcome all of this and i mean that, that that's a, an a great example of how important is is, is family so so that, that that's amazing and but i, I mean what what made you what made you become a climber like you mentioned mm -hmm. like you 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 were uh, you did uh, skydiving and you realized that you, you can do a, a lot of things but i would like to know what was that moment when you when you 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 were thinking like oh i mean i i i would like to to, to climb the the mountains and, and all of that yeah just 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 before that um you know you know uh, you know, I did lots of things. So I did like a uh, wheelchair basketball, wheelchair rugby. I did like sitting volleyball. Um, I did um, water skiing. I did um, uh, kayaking, which is I kayak quite around the world. I skied around the world, um, and uh, you know, I took a, like a, a older, uh, you know, Paralympic sports like a javelin and um, you know, disc. Uh, I tried curling, sledge hockey. Um, what else I tried? Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the rock climbing. I swim faster than I used to have legs. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, yeah, I did did uh, pretty much quite a lot of archery. I actually won gold medal in archery and uh, bronze medal in wheelchair table tennis in in the games in Oklahoma and um yeah i did i did quite, quite lots of things and when i was skiing in colorado in canada in austria germany and looking at the mountain i just you know always always in my mind that is mount everest and i was just thinking how am i gonna do that and simply um i had uh, one of my friends that who used to climb and we went to nepal for skiing but at the time i told him that I will I, I will go only if you uh, you know you know help me climbing mountain and he said no problem brother I will help you you can try <laughs> <laughs> so, so we start climbing um, then after climbing um, there's no legs were designed for double above knee amputees and we designed so uh, many of my friends in America who helped me out on this and uh, many companies that who helped me out on this. And then uh, I supposed to climb in 2018, 
but um, you know, uh, Nepal government banned double amputees uh, and visually impaired uh, from climbing climbing mo Nepalese mountains over six and a half thousand meters. So uh, you know, I went to uh, Geneva um, in the United Nations to raise this point. Uh, but diplomatic means it will, uh, you know, we, we knew that it's it was going to take a long, long time, which will never happen. So we went to Supreme Court in Nepal and filed a case and overturned the rule. Uh, then after that, the corona popped in um, and couldn't able to do and um, uh, and, and 2019, we couldn't able to raise the enough fund just the pursuing other people that I can able to climb the mountain and get help was a big, big challenge. It's bigger than climbing a Mount Everest. <laughs> um, and um, uh, yeah, and finally uh, we prepared in 2022 and yeah, in 2023 we climbed Mount Everest. Okay, and, and why did you choose this the, in, in this month? Like if the best months to, to climb the, the mountain Everest? Yeah, so climbing Mount Everest is mainly um, climb in spring season, which is normally April and May. Um, that is the season that, uh, um, you know, people climb Everest. This year was a record number of permits were issued. Uh, so 478 permits were issued this year. Um, and it was one of the most deadliest year. Uh, this year so 17 people died um, so far so um and many got injured and um, it was you know the weather wasn't that good as you, know, as you can imagine that climate change uh, so yeah um it was i'm just uh feel lucky that i'm just uh be back home with my family yeah and now that you mentioned like this is one of the most deadly uh, years about climbing Mount Everest. But in in some note, I, I was reading that you you had the opportunity to see, well, the sadly to, to see people that, that were dead when you were climbing the, the Mount Everest. Uh, what 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 were your thoughts about that when you were climbing and you are seeing all of this? Yeah, yeah, just I think, uh, you know, I was mentally prepared. I knew that, that there were some dead bodies there that not removed. I knew that. Uh, but I think um, one thing was from when we were going from camp three to camp four, they are dragging two dead bodies and, and make sure we respect them with the dignity and give them away so that they can pass us. Uh, it was a, you know, big reminder for us to what could happen on the top um and um another in, in another way i was thinking that this is the thing that is the body that i don't want to be you know you know this is how i just kind of try to think positively and try to be strong uh yeah then on the summit day when you're coming down there's two fresh uh buddies uh, you know but is there um just died in that day or i think on that day we we I think around 100 people went and 30 submitted and four were died on that on that day on the mountain. So, yeah, unfortunately, people died there um, for many different reasons. Some of that could be preventable. I think if we with the you know good uh, logistic, uh, good management, and you know make sure enough oxygen, and uh, you know well trained, well experienced. I think, yeah, it yeah, could, could be avoided. Uh, there's some of the deaths that you can't avoid, um, which is like a natural disaster, like avalanche and, you know, like a three of um, Serapas on Mount Everest this year where, um, you know, um, the uh, ice glacier collapsed and they were buried. Um, so um, um, those are hard to prevent, but many other things could be prevented yeah and also you, you mentioned that some of the the deaths could could be a, a boy but 
in one of those things you mentioned the oxygen and i'm also uh, did you run run out of oxygen when you were climbing the mount everest yes yeah yeah so um when we were coming down uh after we submitted so normally people submit about eight nine o'clock in the morning uh, and um you know um after 12 pretty much no go you know don't go uh, don't submit after 12 because the weather get worse but we um we submitted 3 10 p.m so in the afternoon so i was just thinking we were just thinking you know a couple of times i wanted to give up as well and just the guy said yeah we got enough oxygen we, we keep going <laughs> it wasn't excellent um uh, uh, and we submitted that and once we start coming down two sherpas oxygen ran out and they just um, gone down without oxygen um and three of three or three of us um uh, went down and just below the south summit my oxygen also ran out and Sherpa gave me his oxygen oxygen and he also went down and yeah me and my brother was just you know I was just suffering in my back holding the rope you know the fixed line uh, and by the time we go to this balcony we had about 30 or 40 minutes uh, 30 to 40 minutes oxygen left uh, left for us uh, and uh, just our aim was to just keep down going down and by the time so in the morning when we up, went up to the balcony it was um, you know we'll walk all night and at balcony it was a daytime and when we were coming down at um, balcony it got dark so yeah we, we just want to go as as fast as loud as possible so possibly hopefully we'll get rescued or someone will come and Luckily, the guys uh, came from down with the two uh, bottle of uh, three bottle of oxygen, one for himself, two for us, uh, and you know, gave us some, um, uh, gave us uh, some brought us some hot water, and drinking hot water was like a going like a you know you know in a heaven. You know, it's like it's amazing uh, because you know, uh, oh, actually, I was carrying the. You know, this is a water bottle I was carrying, carrying, and uh, you know, even the hot water just froze there. So it just because you were just carrying too long, it got cold and you know froze. So we didn't have that water. So yeah, then we were saved. And it, by the time we went camp four, it became eleven o'clock at night. So uh, altogether, it, it took um, twenty-five hours, ten minutes. You know, non-stop walking, walking, dragging, climbing, uh, crawling. You know, most of them, most of them was crawling up. <laughs> okay, it, it was like twenty-five hours to climb the mountain and go back. Twenty-five hours, ten minutes. Twenty-five hours, ten. Minutes. Okay, so, oh. most than a day. So, <laughs> yeah, that I I believe that that shows. How really hard it is to, I mean, to to submit this and and you you made it, so <laughs> it, it, it's, yeah. it's amazing. And yeah. and how how did you how how was your preparation for or how was your training be, before climbing the Mount Everest? Yeah, before um, before that, my aim was to um, my aim was to go to um you know climb one six thousand meter and, and eight thousand meter then go to the Everest that was the plan but uh, as a you know authorities banned us so you know I started climbing more mountain the corona popped in and just I couldn't sit down couldn't raise money and I started climbing other smaller mountains so uh, I climbed Ben Nevis which is tallest mountain here in UK uh, Mont Blanc which is tallest mountain in um, West uh, Europe, Western Europe, uh, I climb uh, Mount Tukal, uh, which is tallest mountain in North Africa, and Kilimanjaro, which is tallest mountain in Africa. Uh, I went in Nepal, trained some passes um, as well. So I, I, I trained in Jangla Pass, Trongla Pass. Uh, I also climbed uh, to 6,000 6, meters, so Mera Peak, 
Um, it's like climb twice before I went to Everest. I actually climatized on Mera Peak and climbed summited Mera Peak. Uh, uh, and um, Sulu Far East, and I think on those mountain, I think no, no, no amputees has submitted. I think any of those mountain. Yeah. So, so you just don't achieve this, like, like to to climb in Mount Everest. You achieve <laughs> to climb in all of all of those other that mountains. Was, that wasn't in the plan. So it just <laughs> it just happened because. It, you know, I had to push my expedition back. So what I what, what I should be doing in between, and I make sure I must be keep training. So yeah. So yeah, and I think that that's called like you are training, you are normal, and someone told you, hey, you you achieve a new record. Like, well, I, yeah. I'm just yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty much all of them, uh, they were all records. Okay. One way or another, all of them. Okay, that's good. And and well. What did you feel when you when you you achieved this big mountain, the Mount Everest? Uh, what, what what were your your feelings uh, after doing Everest or before doing Everest? Uh, before and after, <laughs> I was like, yeah. Before it was like always. I was thinking last five six years how to climb it, and from my childhood I was just thinking about Everest. You know, you know. Um, after climbing, I didn't believe it. You know. You know, I always last, you know, whole of my life, I was just thinking to climb and now it's done. You know, I was like, is it really done? <laughs> you know, you know, just like, uh, it, I don't feel that it's kind of real. Even when I get injured, you know, you know, in the army, we trained, oh, you got, you know, you, you got a gunshot wound on your chest and you start pretending to, ah, this, right, right? and the guys came and patch you off and they do the drills. Um, and when I got injured and at one point I thought, is it is it real or you know am i <laughs> would we trade or would you in trading and it is real and also yeah everest was real as well yeah it was done yeah it's done now okay that's amazing that's amazing and and now how, how do you think or do you feel like your life has changed since you climbed the mount everest mm, i think for me from from my inside i'm the same person uh, you know, even um, you know, after losing my legs, people start treating me differently. But I, honestly, I've got the same heart and same mind, right? <laughs> and I'm still the same. I'm just, I got the same heart, same mind. Um, yeah, one thing it sends is, um, you know, uh, from Nepal government, tourism minister to prime minister to president to uh, you know you know many ministerial house of speakers to you know many many who invited me in their office and congratulated me and i got a lots of uh, certificates and, uh, around here lots of uh, you know um yeah i have just um you know i, I just got a letter here oh, from buckingham palace <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so uh yeah so yeah um uh, I, um, uh, I, I, you know, lots of, uh, you know, people who contacting me and congratulating me and uh, that is thing. But I think, honestly, from inside my heart, I'm the same person. Simple. The, the, that's amazing. And I think this, this would be all. I mean, I really appreciate that you take your time to doing this interview. I'm really thankful that you being here. I mean, congratulations also for for achieving this this hard, super hard record. <laughs> and <laughs> and yeah, I I just would like if you have some word from people that maybe are going through the same as you, or maybe they want to achieve something. I don't know if you have some some words for for them. Um. Uh, I think I would say one thing. I have made uh, mm, a motto that uh, life is all about adaptation and nothing is impossible. Uh, as long as we can adapt our life according to the time and situation, you know, uh, we can able to uh, succeed. You know, this is what is a human revolution. I think everything is uh, we have right now is from challenge at some point in time they challenge themselves they work hard uh, you know they invested their time and money 
So we are privileged to, you know, I'm talking to you, right? This is our somebody telling us. <laughs> and yeah. also your audiences, your <laughs> listeners, and your your viewers uh, as well. So so this is uh, this is not free. This didn't can this didn't pop in. God didn't bring us this one. So somebody, some human. <laughs> worked really telling themselves worked hard and made this possible so um um, um uh, as long as we adapt according to the life uh, according to time and situation then we will make anything uh, is uh, possible you know i climb with the shorter legs on the mountain uh, I, i'm wearing other legs now and you know, working legs and, you know, if not, I would be on a wheelchair. It's like, it's, it's a very simple principle. Like say, if it's too warm, we put, um, you know, uh, umbrella on or AC on, right? Um, it depends on where you are. And if it's too cold, we put a jacket on, right? So, so, so we do that all the time. But this is really, really powerful. We need to understand this, you know, even in business as well. You know, in the Corona time, we de adapted differently. You know, now it's different, right? So, in the time, we'll change up and down, and we need to kind of with the flow of the up and down. You know, you know, the time as well. If we we don't adapt, we won't exist. So, so like dinosaurs, right? So, yeah. so, so make sure we adapt our life according to the time and situation, uh, and make things happen, and also. Uh, help the um, hopefully our challenge today will help our future generations like uh, you know if Tenjing uh, Norge and Edmund Hilary they didn't climb the Mount Everest mm -hmm. then maybe we're just waiting someone to climb right now right who's gonna climb <laughs> we will be still <laughs> waiting and I wouldn't even dream of climbing it after that I think it's just uh, simply um you know we you learn so much in that the, the legacy of the Tenzing Norge and Sir Edwin Hilary is amazing we were raising a fund for uh, fun last night in London uh, and uh, they built 42 schools and hospitals in the Everest region only and you know uh, you know how many people uh, that you know benefiting from that you know, how many people get educated so that they can have slightly a better life so um, yeah, I'm 43, um, and uh, you know I'm not. I you know I have got very short time to you know work hard and make some difference, and I'll keep doing it. Uh, and simply, um, we shouldn't be the selfish ourselves, you know, because because of our you know uh, ancestors who work super hard, so we're having this, and we need to work something. Make sure we. Uh, we, uh, you know, you know, protect the planet. You know, um, uh, we make sure that uh, we don't, you know, resolve our, you know, differences with the violent way, right? So, so, so this is the next thing that I would be doing in promoting world peace uh, and um, climate change. And I think, um, you know, with the help of others, we can make a lots of different. You know, you know, even the ice was melt. You know, some of side of my tent melted two meters of that. You know, that's that's just crazy in melting in this one and a half months. And if that goes that way, yeah, it, you know, planet's not gonna last longer. So long. So we need to, you know, slow down as much as we can. That possible if we can. You know, you know, and and it's our responsibility to do that so that our future generations I uh, can enjoy. Okay, the that's amazing. I, I take these two parts like to to adaptation and also to take care of our planet. I mean, this yeah. is the only planet that we have, <laughs> so yeah, we we need to take care of. It. Yeah, yeah, we don't have another planet to go and live in. So 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 yeah. we need to take care of it.